call the snow leopard the ghost cat. It never lets itself be seen. In 2002, Professor Eli Sommer published a paper describing a mental disorder called maladaptive daydreaming, which as the name suggests, refers to a condition where excessive daydreaming becomes counterproductive and damaging to one's well-being. This condition is probably best portrayed in The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, a movie about negative assets manager Walter who appears to be dreaming his life away and presents many of the common symptoms of maladaptive daydreaming. Maladaptive daydreamers often have extreme elaborate daydreams that can even be compared to movies or novels in terms of scope and detail. They can be triggered by real-life events like interactions with others or listening to music. Another common symptom is acting out daydreams. We only see Walter briefly whispering a conversation he imagines, but in real life this can extend into acting out emotions and doing full body enactments of the daydream. Maladaptive daydreaming can take up a lot of time, which is often made worse by a strong desire to keep daydreaming, and can therefore become counterproductive in completing everyday tasks. Although some tend to view maladaptive daydreaming as just some quirky trait of their personality. What is it you call it when he goes into one of his little places? Oh, zoned out. You do that now and then. There are others who approach it more as a harmful addiction that is not unlike substance abuse, in which the enjoyment of daydreaming is a deflection of a deeper issue, the issue of you not wanting to be you. One blog series in particular illustrates this deeper issue by using the following quote. If you try to have a conversation with me, I can't bring myself to listen to you. I pretend to listen and you really think I do, but my mind is somewhere else, thinking about it. I feel as if I'm not here, but I'm not there either, and I can't shake off this feeling of being split in two. Walter! Walter! Bye! Oh, sorry, I was just... Where do you go? This quote seems to describe Walter's situation pretty accurately as he repeatedly zones out of conversations, but it actually comes from a recovering heroin addict, pointing out the seriousness of the issue. Walter! I was just saying I'll let you know when I hear back from Peg. Okay. Thank you. Maladaptive daydreamers use their daydreaming as a coping mechanism, expressing in their daydreams what they fail to express in real life. Looking closer at Walter's daydreams, we can see that they are exactly that. They are the feelings he didn't express, the words he didn't say, the journeys he never made, the beliefs he didn't defend. In short, it is the life he hasn't lived, the life that is only accessible to him in fantasy. By escaping into his daydreams, Walter, just like any other addict, cuts ties with his identity and ego, and therefore all the insecurities and problems that are bothering him, which, as the blog points out, is why daydreaming feels so damn good. And yet, it is this connection between our inner life and the outside world that is so vital for our ability to express ourselves, a connection which maladaptive daydreamers have lost. This is also what makes maladaptive daydreaming so insidiously addictive. Because they express so much of themselves only in their daydreams, daydreaming becomes part of the very core of their being, the only reminder of what it means to be fully alive. <coughs> For many maladaptive daydreamers, giving up daydreaming feels like giving up a part of themselves, perhaps even the only part that strangely enough feels actually real. And in a sense this is true, maladaptive daydreaming is ultimately driven by a craving for life, and there's nothing wrong with that, it's just that this passion exists in the wrong place. I used to have a mohawk and uh, a backpack and I guess this idea of who I wanted to be what I wanted to do. We see this in the secret life of Walter Mitty when Walter embarks on his journey to find a missing photograph, which I believe wasn't so much about him stepping outside of his comfort zone, but more so about rebuilding the bridge between his inner life and the outside world, holding on to the passion, love and emotions that drove his daydreams, but redirecting them back to reality. This shift is also made clear in the filmmaking itself. In the beginning of the film, Walter is barely present in the frame, as if shying away from reality, which is in stark contrast with his fantasies, which are much more vivid and energetic. During Walter's journey, however, the energy from his fantasies is being redirected towards reality, showing in a somewhat exaggerated way how Walter begins to live life more passionately. 
His daydreaming also becomes less and less. One advice that is often given to maladaptive daydreamers is to avoid triggers and very much like meditation, focus on the present moment and catch yourself when you're drifting off. Right here. We see this in a subtle scene where Walter rides a cab home after the first part of his journey. Unlike his earlier daydreams, Walter snaps out of this one himself and removes himself from the trigger. It is the last daydream he has in the movie. In the end, Walter finds the photograph but doesn't even look at it because finding the photograph was never the real goal. Instead, his real victory lies in the newfound ability to express himself, in all the things he used to express in his daydreams which are now expressed in reality, like his desire to travel and be more adventurous, his frustration with his boss and his feelings towards his co-worker. He no longer relies on the false comfort of his daydreams and allows himself to let his emotions flow into the present moment, for ultimately it is only when we build a healthy relation between our inner life and the outside world that we can fully live our lives and, as we see symbolized through the snow leopard, fully experience its beauty. What was the picture? Let's just call it a ghost cat, Walter Mitty. <laughs> <laughs>